Hey guys, Michelle here from Cashel Creations, and today I'm going to make a recipe card. Never done this before, so I'm doing a recipe um, exchange, recipe card exchange, um, in a group that I am doing a retreat for this holiday season. And I don't know if any of you have tried eggnog cookies. Um, I know eggnog is one of those you love it or you hate it situation. Um, but I love eggnog and I came across this cookie option about eight or nine years ago. And it's really good, so I'm going to be putting this into my recipe card. And I just wanted to show you my process. So stay tuned and let's get started. So after I've cut them all down to size, I'm gonna go ahead and use my corner rounder and I'm going to round, of course you don't see it, but with this option here. So it kind of gives it a nice look like this. And then I'm going to then mat this black card stock on top. And then we're going to use the, I would call it Manila? No. I guess it's just brown cardstock. Craft. Craft cardstock. And we're going to kind of ink the edges. And then we're going to put this on here. And let's get started. Next up, we're going to cut the ingredients, and once we're done cutting them, I'm also going to corner round it, but we're going to use, or I'm going to go use this corner rounder, so it kind of gives it this, um, this would be on the back side of the recipe card, so it kind of gives it like a little lining. I'm not going to mat it because it's so big. If I made the font any smaller, I would think it would defeat the purpose of having it on. And anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so after we just cut all the um, ingredients, all of these, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut the black mat for the front and I'm going to do five and a quarter by three and a half and a little bit more than three and a half. So I'm gonna go and cut all the black cardstock and then we'll be back to do some inking and some construction. Hey 
guys, so I'm going to be making some little tiny Christmas trees whoops, that comes from this die set. And so I'm going to um, take this craft cardstock and what we're going to do is we're going to embellish it with some ink. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is take my little Distress Ink um, cubes that I have. I have like three stacks of them. And we're just going to basically do um, that kissing method where you kiss the paper onto um, the ink and we're just going to have some fun with it. So um, I have here the first color is Fired Brick and I'm just going to put some down. I'm wondering if I need the other thing on top. We'll try to try it with this first. I'm going to spritz some water. And then I am just going to get it all different colors. And I'm not really caring what it looks like. I just wanted to add some color into it. And then I'm going to bring this other one that I have and just pick up some of the rest and get rid of whatever's on there. And I probably should have gotten my heat tool. But basically, almost all the color is gone, and that's fine with me because I don't want to have too much of that one color. So we did red. I'm thinking what other colors could go with this. Um, da -da -da -da. It's very hard to figure out what colors to choose. I mean, I guess it's Christmas eggnog cookies, so let's go with some peeled paint. So I'm going to use some peeled paint. And it's going to do the same kind of steps. I'm going to put some all over the, the mat. And I'm going to grab my paper. Oh. I guess that's where you make mud, right? It's okay. I'm gonna get some right there. We'll add some other colors in this. Well, that came out really pretty. You can see that. I'm not good, you know, you go to art class when you're younger, but you just have fun. You don't really pay attention to the color wheel. All right, I think we need some like blues and purples. Okay, so I guess I should probably get my heat tool. So give me a second. I'm plug that sucker in. So what I want to use a heat tool for is basically to dry the area so I have more of a dryer concept. that bad all right so I'm just gonna take off the excess color and I think we should go with maybe some blues and purples um, so I don't know let's go with mermaid lagoon I think that's a pretty color and maybe we should take off all the green so I'm gonna put some mermaid Lagoon, and that's that color. Spritz some water, and we're gonna go to town. So, I'm gonna kind of try to get into the areas that are not. Oh, that's pretty. And so, I see about. <laughs> Some of that 
color up. Obviously, it's not white cardstock, so you see it differently with the pigmentation. Then we're going to get this one kind of go in. And I'm just touching down in some parts. And let's see. Get a little bit of blue. And I mainly just want to do this. So that way when I roll the Christmas trees through I'm going to take off some of the excess water and see about doing it again. Of course. I like when you get those little splatters like that. It looks so cool. Go in here. I feel like we need some purple. Let's get this back over here and see what it looks like. I need something in there. That looks pretty. I'm gonna dry this again. <laughs> come in with some purple and let's get what purple do I have all right I have seedless preserve and that's this color right here so we're gonna put some of this down and then spritz some water Nice cranberry color. Look at that, that's pretty. And that's nice. I'm gonna put that off to the side so I can do the other one. And I feel we need some color. Let's see if I can Let's see. I wanna. Kissing it, but it's like because it's so big. All right, let's see about removing some. Let me do the same thing with this one. There we go. Get some of that excess off. I think this one here is done. Very interesting. I like that one. I think it needs a little bit more of a purple over here. Ooh, that came out nice. And I think that is it. I want to say that now I'm going to go through my Spellbinder die cut machine and we're going to cut out some Christmas trees. So let's see how cute they come out. So stay tuned. After cutting out all of the Christmas trees, it seems I can't speak right now, um, we're going to go ahead and make a mini apron to put on the front of the eggnog cookie off to the side. So because of the size of the front of the card, I am going to measure from this pretty sage green color in my stash. And I think it goes really nice and complements some of the colors on the page. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to size. And we're going to do two and a quarter inches in width. So that's already done. 
and then the length is going to be three and a quarter so i'm going to go ahead and cut that down and then how we're going to turn this piece of cardstock into an apron is pretty cool i am going to use my one and a half inch circle um, punch and we are going to punch out a portion off to the side so I'm hoping you can see that so I'm going to come down a little bit from the top and come in a bit so I believe we're gonna go like right there pop that up and then what I'm gonna do is take the other side and line it up to the half circle that we punched out, line it up on this side. And then I'm going to use my pencil and draw a line to make sure that I'm punching out the same size. Okay, so let's make sure you guys can see that. So then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm going to line up the inside of my punch to where that is and I'm gonna punch it out so now we have this odd shaped card and it kind of looks off to be honest with you doesn't it look off it does look off okay obviously this is not the great way to show you let's just come down a little bit I think that looks better okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our scissors and I'm just going to cut this straight down like so and then I'm gonna flip it over and to the other side because it's easier for me to cut and then right now we have it looking like this so as you can kind of see it's taking form so now I'm gonna use my quarter and quarter rounder I'm going to round out the bottom to give it that nice, oh, I hate when it does that. There we go. Now, I want to round out the corners at the top, but my quarter rounder doesn't fit in there. So what I'm going to do is just do it myself. If you do have one of those um, memory keeper, one of these, I believe you can like wiggle it in there to do it, but I don't have one of those. Since I have um, the three in one that I just showed you. So I'm just gonna like slightly just corner it, nothing crazy. I'm gonna do it to both sides. And so far, you can kind of see its shape. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little pocket on the bottom. And I found this um, sheet of cardstock that I picked up at Hobby Lobby's paper pad. Um, let me see if I have it here so I can show you. This was a collection I picked up at Hobby Lobby. So I picked out one of them and I thought this would give it a nice vintage look. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut out, oh, I'm gonna use my scrap. I'm gonna cut out um, one and three quarter inches wide and then one and a quarter inches in length. So I believe this is already the width, and that again is one and three quarters. And then the height I'm gonna do is one and a quarter. Now you can do your pocket however big you want. I just wanted it to give it a nice, um, a nice little, I don't know what you wanna call it, like not so much depth, but that's what I wanted to go for. If you're making these aprons bigger, obviously you want to scale it to what fits. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to corner around the bottoms. And I'm going to use the same size corner rounder to match the bottom of the apron. I don't know why it always does that. I thought I mastered it, but I obviously did not. So as you can see, it's so cute. <laughs> it kind of gives me that Christmassy feel. 
So I'm going to place it there. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put anything inside the pocket. So for right now, I am just gonna do um, the three sides. If you're not gonna put anything inside the pocket, obviously you can just um, glue the whole thing down. But what I'm gonna do is, again, just do the three sides given my glue comes out and I'm just going to place it back down so that way it gives me the option in case I decide to go forward with putting something inside the pocket and then you just want to line it up before you push down all the edges and I think that looks I think that looks good so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that's down good. And then we're gonna make, as you know, it depends on how how lavishing you want your apron. I am just gonna give it a little hook on um, the rim for your neck. You can add more coming out as a string. I Because this is a recipe card, I didn't wanna do too much because I don't know how the person's using the recipe card, if it's in a true index or what. So I'm just gonna do a little notch at the top. And so what I found was I went through my tools and I have one of these um, picks. Um, and so I'm just gonna come off a little bit, if you can see there, and I'm just gonna push down without damaging my paper. And this was a little bit tricky. I guess I could use a mat. I don't ruin the glass so what we can do is poke the hole right where you want it and then I push it all the way down making sure you don't hurt yourself and then you can see how this goes down all the way and then we're gonna do the other side here so I mean do you have to have it perfect probably not remember this is a handmade item so again, I'm gonna poke it, and then I am going to push it down all the way. Now, obviously you see my nails, so it's very difficult for me to weed <laughs> the, um, the little twine that's gonna go up there. I found in my stash, this is from 2012, um, some doodled, doodle bug design twine, and I'm gonna use this nice pretty gray. Obviously see all the other colors I have on there. And in my toolkit, I have a sewing needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this. And I found this easiest for me. Um, if you made your holes bigger, it probably would be easier. But um, essentially, I just did that. And then like any sewing option, I'm just gonna poke the hole that I just made. And then I'm just gonna slide it all the way through. And again, I don't want to rip it, so I'm just going to go very carefully. And then once I come through, I'm just going to weed it again this way. And then come back around. And again, I only need one um, piece of the string. I'm not going to double it. But I just have that there so it comes all the way through. So as you can see right now, looks like a string mess. But um, I'm just going to pull this portion of the string and now i can take this off and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to double knot this so since this is going to be the end it doesn't really matter my length so i'm going to make my life easier and just do it bigger and then bring it down of course i'm pretty sure if you don't have nails like mine it's easier Okay, so there's one. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can just do one knot, so let's see what happens. So we're gonna just pull it through, and you see, that's just really giving you the indentation of the support you need for um, the twine. So then you're gonna pull the other one out, and again, keep in mind that we are gonna put this off to the side like this. So you don't want it too high because again, the card has a little um, lip like a index card. 
So you just wanna make sure that you're giving whatever, wherever you're placing the apron on enough space, okay? So I'm going to then cut this and then loop it like I did the other side, giving myself some space. And we're gonna go ahead and loop this, like I said. So you can pull from there because we're going to pull it out again. And then you're just gonna trim off the edges. Okay, so we pull this back and then we see we have the knots. Now what I like, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim off these little edges here so it's not too much because you don't want it to take away from your apron. And then I am going to glue where the holes are so that it stays in place. So I put a little bit of glue there and I'm just going to put too much. And I'm just gonna hold that there so it stays. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, just a little amount and then we're gonna pull it so now it stays. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is all those little trees that we die cut. I'm gonna choose one at random. These came out so, so cute. Hopefully you can see that. And they're all different, which is what I like. And I'm going to use some reverse tweezers and I'm going to put some glue on it and put it right here in the center. And we have this little cute apron that we just made and now we gotta make 20 more of them. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not that hard to do once you get the hang of it. Obviously, you can use different twine. They can all be different because it's not going to the same person. And then again, I left this open to put a little something in it if I wanted to. I'm not sure yet, um, but I thought that this was a cute little um, add-on to put on the front of the card off to the side. So that's how it would look. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you all the rest of them that I'm going to make. So stay tuned. So we're done doing all the little aprons and now we're going to piece together the recipe card. So what I decided to do is, let's put this to the side. Um, this recipe card that we cut out initially, what I'm going to do is kind of round off this corner right there with the small one. So I'm just going to give it that little edge that it sees there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Distress Ink Vintage Photo and we're just gonna make it antique-ish, I guess is what you wanna call it. So I have my little dauber and I'm just gonna go around the edges and I'm just gonna make sure that it kinda blends, give it that vintage look. Hopefully the camera is not shaking as much as I see it moving. And if it is, I am truly, truly, truly sorry. So I'm just gonna go around the edges because mainly that's what's gonna be seen. Yeah, the camera is shaking like crazy. I need a better mound. And then we're also going to do this on the back. And the reason being is because I want to give it that whole feel like it's been aged. I'm just going in a circular motion. I am so sorry that this thing is shaking the way it is and I hope it doesn't come out like that. The 
All I'm trying to do is where I dab my ink as I'm going in the corners. And it doesn't have to be perfect, mainly because vintage is not perfect. So that's going to be my card. The other thing I am going to distrust is this ingredients card because it just gives me too much white. I don't know if you guys look at it like that, but I'm going to kind of do the same kind of concept as we did the other one, except I'm not going to make it so noticeable. So I'm going to come out on the side since I just dabbed it and kind of give it that, um, like the excess to be out here because um, I don't want it to be too, not bright, but too much. And then once I go around the edges, I'm just going to go on the inside and kind of give it a little bit of a grungy, vintage look. Again, it's not going to be specific. Kind of like blend out that little mark there. And then, as you can see, it kind of has smudges everywhere. So we're now going to adhere everything together. So I want this to be the front of my recipe card. This is going to be the back. So since there's nothing else on here but this, I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. You can use your adhesive tape if you like. I just find that the glue stays stronger. Um, I used to be a very adhesive tape runner person. And then as I started making folios, um, I kind of switched. So just place it however you want. So there is what we're going to do. And then I had found this. <clears throat> excuse me, ink dauber from this collection. Let me show you. Um, Terrific Textures by Bow Bunny, and it's this one right here. So I'm going to kind of give it a vintage photo archival ink. I'm going to do it very lightly because I don't want it to be too dark. I kind of want to give it that a coffee stain was placed there, but fainted. And I'm gonna kind of go off like that. So it kind of gives it that grungy, like I left something on there. The next thing I'm gonna do, let me close these up so they don't dry, is I wanna put here a um, stamp that says the details. I just think it would be a cute touch. So I'm gonna use my Versifying ink again, use whatever black ink you want or color ink you want. I'm just gonna do it with this, and I'm going to just get it all juiced up and just place that there. I just think it kind of adds like a cute touch. So, the details are the ingredients, right? So, then what we're gonna do is now the flip side, which is actually the front. So the front, we're going to have this matted on the black. So we're going to go ahead and adhere that to the black. So again, I'm just going to use some glue. And then we're going to center this. Make sure I'm in frame. Now I'm centering it, but you know, you could always off center it or just you know, put it however you like. So now what I'm going to do is adhere this onto the front of my card. Front of my recipe card. And I want to do this first because I want to make sure that I have enough space and gap for the apron to adhere to it. And I am going to be mailing these. So I did have everything as a flat lay. But I did think it would be kind of cute to put the apron with um, foam dots. So if this is something that you're doing for yourself or to gift to somebody that is nearby and close, you could definitely, you know, pop that up so that it kind of gives it some dimension. So before we put this, I'm actually going to put something here because I feel like it needs 
a sentiment of some sort and I couldn't find anything that was for recipes or for baking <laughs> so I found one that says merry and bright and of course it's for the holidays so why not so I'm gonna go ahead and use my versifying ink again and get that all just up and then in the corner make sure it's the right way and not upside down and then we have merry and bright there so then now we're going to place our apron i just think this is so stinking cute um uh, some of the ink came off but it is what it is so you can place this however you want i think it looks cute off centered and off to the side so we're gonna go ahead and do that I'm not too worried about the string or the twine. Um, it could just be there. I don't think it's going to be a problem. And then we are going to adhere this off to the side. And I think that is adorable. Of course, if I can pick it up right. So what do you guys think? Isn't this cute? Obviously, you can do this with any kind of recipe you wanted. Of Again, mine was an eggnog cookies, um, and it kind of gives it that grungy feel. This does fit inside of the card um, envelope that I already had on hand. So I'm going to put it in there, as you can see, and it folds perfectly. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. I'm trying to do more of these um, type of tutorials so I can show you my process and give you some tips if it's something new that you haven't done and show you something new that I have come across that I think is super, super cute. So definitely leave a comment down below if um, you would like to see more of these and if you've done this before. And I hope to catch you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day, no matter what time of day you're watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.